I, I, I know that it's a stoma, but I have named it um, Shlomo the Stomo. I know it's a stoma, but I gave it a name. Okay, my name is Phyllis Rovner. I am 78 years old. I had ostomy surgery about uh, 28 years ago when I was 50. It freed me up. It gave me my life back because before that, I had ulcerative colitis and um, I couldn't do very much <laughs> because of that anyway. And I must say that Convitec is A++++ to infinity. I have, that's what they put on me in the hospital and I have used it all these years. I would never go anyplace else. I think the first place we went was Belize in Central America in 1995, but we went back there two more times, once in 2004 and another time in 2005. Oh, and I have to interrupt here. Um, what I do now, or what I did do when we could actually be really face to face, uh -huh. I was very involved with the international community. Uh, there was a group, Athens is a small town, Athens, Ohio, mm -hmm. but it's a college town. So we have a lot of international people here. And I have been, um, I tried to be involved with the international community. My mother was born in Poland. I grew up Jewish and Auschwitz was in Poland. So if my mother hadn't left for better or worse, I wouldn't exist. Aww. Yeah, I mean, I always think about that. And um, she, all of the rest of her siblings went to school. One was even a lawyer but she never did. And my therapist told me I was too young to teach her, but I don't practice the religion, but I am stuck with Jewish guilt. So I go forward and I help people with English as a second language. And I have always been interested in the international community. And sometimes when we went to certain countries like Ecuador, uh, I had met Margarita in Athens, and she is from Ecuador. And when we visited Ecuador two times, once in 1998 and another time in 2000, I visited Margarita in her home country. I'm trying, Papua New Guinea, I visited. Um, a, a woman I had met here in Athens named Ruth. So I was able to visit her in her country. And then in um, Thailand, yeah, in Thailand, uh, there was a woman here from Thailand named Karuna. And when we went to Thailand, we visited Karuna with her family and then went out to dinner with them. Um, anyway, so chronologically, Belize was 1995, 2004, and 2005. Costa Rica was 1996, 2000, 2002, 2003, 2006. Panama, uh, 2004. Okay, Ecuador, 1998 and 2000. Now, one time when we were in Ecuador, well, both of us sort of got a stomach flu. And my husband, who has his complete digestive system uh, with a colon, an entire colon, got much sicker than I did. There, was a, uh, there happened to be a physician at the same lodge in the rainforest where we were 
And he came and he said, oh, it's, it's a stomach flu. But what happened to me is that I was going, th I would always take more wafers, more equipment than I thought I would need because it's better to have too much than not enough. But because of this virus, I was going through my wafers to beat the band. I mean, just really, I was, I was worried. I didn't go down to zero. I went down, I don't remember how many I had, but anyway, I said to my husband, I'm worried, let's see if I can get some here. Now, here I am in another country that speaks a different language, Ecuador. We went to the capital, Quito. I went into, and I, I guess I had one as an example. Um, we, we stopped at a drugstore. You're not gonna believe this. I went in and asked him if they happened to have this product and this size. You ready? They had them. And I mean, I didn't need them right then, but I always like to be prepared. So I, luckily, I mean, can you believe it? Ostomies are not limited to the United States. And so is Convitec. Thank you. Anyway, so uh, I was able to buy another box of wafers just to be sure. And uh, so I made it home fine. Uh, Peru, uh, 2003 and 2004. And then in the Caribbean, we went to Trinidad, 1999 and 2002. And Trinidad is very close to Tobago. Um, I think people usually go to both. So in 2002, we went to Trinidad and Tobago. And Shlomo just came with me because it's attached. <laughs> I mean, it, the only thing it has kept me from doing, because of the location of my stoma, I can't wear a really low bikini. I can wear a two-piece bathing suit, which I did, uh, but not one that comes down really, really low. Okay, so now I'm, I already did the Caribbean. Uh, Puerto Rico, 2000. The U.S. Virgin Islands, 2001. Now, my husband has South Africa and Madagascar. They are uh, they're close. So, and that was 2001. And um, I wasn't supposed to talk about my husband, but he is an arachnologist. He studies spiders. Can you see my earrings? So we went to a, an arachnology, a spider meeting in South Africa. And um, a lot of people most of the arachnologists are men, but some of them are women. Anyway, um, they made, they had a special trip for spouses uh, to go to Swaziland. And I left my spouse and spent one night in Swaziland. <laughs> I, as I said, the only thing that Shlomo has kept me from doing is wearing a low bikini. and. I mean, so what? <laughs> it has not, I mean, actually it freed me because with ulcerative colitis, I could not have done this. Okay, South Africa and Madagascar. Um, and, um, oh, I love Madagascar. And then in Asia, uh, we went to Borneo and Thailand. And I told you about um, Karuna. Uh, who, who I met here. Um, and most of the time we're going for spiders or a spider meeting or just because, and uh, I discussed this with my husband and he said it was I who wanted to travel, not he. So I pushed him. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, um, and then 
Oceania, we went to Australia and Tahiti in 1992. He has all the dates here. I'm not giving them to you, but it was all with Shlomo the Stomo, otherwise known as a Stoma. I love it because it gave me a life. Before that, I was always in the bathroom with ulcer. And um, you see this? Before, before the surgery, I was skin and bones. I had to, for the, the you know, it's a, it's, it's a fairly large, it's a major surgery. Anyway, I had to save four units of blood before the surgery in case I lost a lot. And I remember writing in my, and this was done in Columbus, which is about an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing in my diary after I had uh, donated, saved uh, a unit of blood, I wrote in my diary, you know, they always check your hemoglobin to make sure your blood is strong enough. Mm -hmm. I wrote in my diary, that my hemoglobin, my blood was strong enough that if I had weighed enough, I could have donated to the public. Australia, Tahiti, New Zealand, and Fiji in 1997, uh, Papua New Guinea and Hawaii in 1999. If you're going to travel someplace, make sure that you take more supplies than you think you will need because you don't know when you will have an accident or like what happened to me in Ecuador. Um, I mean, the, the chances are pretty slim, but better to be safe than sorry. And um, nobody knows that it's there. My best friend is from Syria. Her name, in, in, the, in the Arabic or the Muslim tradition, you're really not supposed to call a person by uh, his or her first name. Her name is Nahida, but you're supposed to call her mother of her first son. So it's Um Gusai. I would visit her all the time. And you know, when I would get talking, since you don't feel it like you feel when you have to, have a bowel movement, but when you have an ostomy, it it has a mind of its own. You 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 don't know it. So we would be talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and eating and talking and shooting the breeze. And my 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 pouch would fill up, and Nahida would look over at me, and this is what she would say: "You ready? Go deliver your baby." So I would run to her bathroom, and um, in their culture, it's not exactly a bidet, but they use water, and it really helped me because then I could put water in my pouch to clean it out. I mean, I could not only empty it, but instead of not being having any water with me, I could use that thing in her bathroom and really clean out my pouch. So um, let's see, Nahida. And now I, um, oh, tips. Uh, take more than you think you will need just to be on the safe side and um, try to uh, check on it periodically. Um, as, as I just told you, when, uh, before we started, I emptied my bag um, because you don't feel it, but it, I mean, it does it on its own, but it saved my life. I love it. And because I, my, my therapist told me I was too young to teach my mother English. Like, I mean, she spoke fine. She, she was understandable, but she would make mistakes. Like instead of saying he doesn't, he don't, and her vocabulary was very limited, um, and she could not write. Um, for example, we would go shopping together, 
and um, she would chart, couldn't sign her name. And I was a child, so I would sign my name and then in parentheses put daughter. So because of, I've left the religion, but the guilt has remained with me. So I go forward and help people with English as a second language in memory of my mother. I mean, I had, I had or have or had, I think I still have them, but you know, I can't. Anyway, um, it's, all, it's always countries where the vocabulary is complete, the, 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 um, the uh, alphabet is completely different and the language like Nepalese, Chinese, Arabic, and that's where most of my students come from. And um, I, you know, I pick up a few words in their language, but I could not read or write their languages. Have you ever seen Arabic? I really, I really um, admire these people. But as you may know, English is the universal language. I mean, how I was so lucky that my mother moved to the United States. Anyway, um, so now uh, may I show you some photos? This is me in um, Australia holding a koala, a baby koala. Okay, and now don't panic. Okay, the next one is Thailand. It's a snake. I mean, I was a biology major also, but I only, because of ulcerative colitis, I didn't go any farther than a bachelor's degree. I was working in a lab at the University of Maryland where my husband was getting his PhD. And the man I was, I was just doing research, um, bleeding salamanders. Yeah, well, I mean, I was a biology major anyway. So um, he asked me to be his graduate student. But the thought, the, the pressure of being a graduate student was out of my league because of the ulcerative colitis. Because every time I would get stressed, the colitis would get worse. Um, I graduated from college in 1963, I think. And when I went to reunion, I think that's... Madagascar, Madagascar, uh, Swaziland, uh, Swaziland, South Africa, Madagascar. Aren't I lucky? Those are, yeah, you've, you've had some amazing adventures. And I owe it all to my, to Convitec, and my ostomy. I could not have done it without that. Do not, do not think of it as a, a negative thing. If, if you have cancer, if you have ulcerative colitis, whatever, or Crohn's, I mean, whatever, that's not how to live your life. But go, go to the, go to the doctor, do what the doctor says, get your surgery, and use Convitec, because it is the best. Before the surgery, I was inhibited, but now I have freedom.